Hello, this is Stephen Rosell. I'm a senior technical specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to cover a variety of symmetrical modeling workflows with a focus on some of the new features and updates to symmetrical modeling in Maya 2016 Extension 2. So here you see a character that we're going to be using for the demonstration. Uh, this is probably recognizable to you. The hero character from Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. His name's Geralt. And this was developed or created by a company called CD Project. So we're going to focus in on the head and do a little bit of modeling. So let's just go in and just isolate select this, just with a control one. And we'll frame in a little bit, and what you can see is I've got a mesh that is symmetrical. The textures are obviously not. Uh, but I want to go in and make a few edits to this. So we've made a number of changes across the board for symmetrical modeling. So one of which is when you're pre-highlighting or when you're selecting an object, by default you're going to be selecting just that component on that side of the object. Now as soon as I toggle on symmetry, first thing you'll notice is it automatically selects the other side. So now if I were to go in and begin to manipulate that face, you can see it's going to manipulate the face on both sides. We also have a new heads-up display, which will show you the symmetry mode that you're in, whether you're in X or Y or, or topology mode. But beyond just the, those basics, we've made a whole bunch of changes to the tools that are now supported for symmetrical modeling. So Maya now is a truly symmetrical modeler in the sense that all the various modeling operations tools uh, that you would want to use are now supported uh, for symmetry. So I'll show you some of the more recent additions. So for instance, in here, you can see around the eyes, I have a section here that I need to start to uh, refine. Uh, so if we go into the multi-cut tool, the multi-cut tool now recognizes symmetry in all the various modes. So I can now click on a vert, click on a edge, hold shift to constrain to degree snapping, and then continue to snap down to different points. You'll notice it mirrors that on both sides. And when I hit enter, it will insert it on both sides. Now this tool is designed to work as well as a insert edge loop tool. So if I hold down control, wherever I am on this surface, you'll see it mirrors over on the other side. And when I click, it will insert that detail. Now another type of tool that works in a similar way is the connect tool. So with the connect tool, it's a little bit different. You can basically go in and grab a series of faces, for instance. And now if I were to go in and add, say, for instance, uh, let's go into multi-component mode, add an edge here on the end, and maybe add a vert here at the corner. You can use a variety of component types, and actually I got the wrong one there, but a variety of component types. And now when I go to the connect tool, it's going to basically create a split across all those. And now I can use my middle mouse button to interactively dial in the location of that split. And again, that's a tool that wasn't supported before. Now you can see it's actually working symmetrically on both sides. When I hit enter, that gets inserted. Now, a couple of other tools to point out. Uh, another tool that is uh, very useful is a tool called Offset Edge Loop. So if I go into edge mode and I come down in here to the Offset Edge Loop tool, I can click on any edge and then automatically offset parallel edges on both sides, basically, that will follow the flow of that loop. And when I release, it will insert. And then if I want more of a freeform split, I can go in and use something like the Insert Edge Loop tool. Now, the Insert Edge Loop tool is similar. Um, it's got a variety of modes. For instance, I have Auto Complete, which I can turn on and off. If I turn that off, then I can basically go in and choose specific edges that I want to basically stitch between. So I can grab one edge here, grab another, another edge here, and it will solve the path in between. Now I can control to remove selections. So I'll remove a few edges and then maybe add a few edges going along here and follow kind of the flow of the, the shadow there that you see on the, on the edge. And now I can click, drag, interact that. Now you can see that mirroring over on the, on the other side. If I come around, you can see I have the exact same situation on the other side. As soon as I hit enter, that's going to insert that detail again on both sides. So a lot of those tools were not previously working, or at least not fully working in all cases with symmetrical modeling. And now uh, pretty much the breadth of the tools that we have are supported. So I should note that that includes even very low level tools. So for instance, if I wanted to change the normal uh, orientation, I have a vertex normal tool. And you'll notice that if I edit it 
edit the vertex normal on one side, it's going to edit the vertex normal on the other side. So not only these higher level tools are supported, but the low level functionality as well. We've also added support for things like our retopology workflow using make live and quadraw. So let's take this object and just uh, to make it a little bit denser, I'm going to go in and apply a simple smooth operation just to add some more details. So let's say that I had this high res object now and I wanted to retopologize this. Uh, what I can do is make the surface live, and then that's going to create a uh, kind of a reference form of the mesh so that I can now snap on it with various tools, including Quad Draw. So when I go into the Quad Draw tool, what you'll notice is that as I begin to drop down some points, those are getting dropped down on the surface. Uh, they'll follow the flow of the surface and the shape of the surface for the character that I'm working on. And you'll also notice that it is incorporating on uh, the, the quad draw points on both sides. There's a threshold within the center. So if I get within a certain threshold, it knows that that's a center point and it will automatically snap it to the center. And now I can just use my shift key to go in here and build a nice simple strip across my character. Now I can go in and use something like control to add some resolution, maybe add some resolution this way as well. And then in addition to that, you can use things like the tab key to draw strips. So let's say I wanted to draw a strip along here. Let's actually make that a little bit bigger with, uh, whoops, with my middle mouse button. There we go. So I'll start here and then I'll just click drag to drop a strip out across the side of the, the forehead. So all the snapping functionality uh, supports mirroring. So if I grab a point or an edge, if I move these within a certain threshold, that's automatically going to snap. And that also includes things like holding the tab key to extend edges. And you'll notice that as I come around here and extend these edges out in different directions, then it's going to maintain the symmetry on both sides. Now, if I were to actually go in and uh, hide the texture for the head, I can just use the layer and I can set this to be unshaded so that I can actually see what that geometry looks like on top of the wireframe of my base mesh. So rather than starting from scratch, we also have a few options for essentially shrink wrapping meshes onto our targets. So I've got a skull cap here, uh, which I'm just going to add to the isolate select. Actually, it's hidden right now, so I have to first select it, and then I'll go up here and say uh, add selected. There we go. So now I've got a skull cap here that I want to shrink wrap onto this object. And I could use a shrink wrap deformer, but that requires a, a connection, basically. Sometimes I just want to quickly wrap one object around another. So with the head still live, I can take this skull cap object, which was created just from a simple sphere, and I can go into the mesh conform tool where we've added a new option, and I'll show you the difference. Previously, when I did the conform, it would do a closest point conform. So when it did the snap, I would end up with these situations where it wouldn't necessarily preserve the, the shape very well. So you'd get these kind of jagged areas here. Now we have the option of going in and using something called a long normal so that now when I do this, I get a much cleaner, smoother snapping uh, from one object to another. So this can be used again, as just a simple quick shrink wrap without construction history or without any kind of deformer node. Now that this is conformed to my object, as long as it's live, I can begin to make edits. For instance, if I move a point on one side, it will move a point on the other side. So I can go in and I can make these kind of broad edits. And I can use soft select as well. And I can start to manipulate the shape of uh, my various vertices and points in order to kind of conform the shape to the head even further. And again, this is working with that live object underneath using simply make live. So I'll just go in and I'll just make a few changes here. Uh, one thing I'll point out is that as I begin to manipulate this, you can see that the more extreme I'm, that I do this, then I'm going to start to see variation in the points. And you'll see a little bit of snapping in there. So we've added, under transform constraints, the ability to use normals. Similar to the conform, you can enable along normals. And you'll get a much smoother, much more predictable slide. And this works with the, the regular slide surface mode as well. So you won't get the popping and the jittering anymore. You'll get this nice, even, smooth transition from one shape to another. And again, I can go in and use things like soft select 
uh, all around here to basically kind of position and conform these objects together. I can do the same thing with this object here. If I go into my vertex mode and I'll just display the edges for this, but I can begin to I can begin to grab points and begin to kind of position and snap them together so that these align up uh, very closely to one another. And I can obviously turn off soft select. Now I can go in and I can grab both of these objects and just simply combine them together, go back into my quad draw mode, and now I can just quickly go in and stitch these together at different points. So I can grab vertices and stitch the vertices together. I can grab entire edges and basically begin to kind of unify these shapes uh, into one cohesive shape and then holding things like shift to kind of smooth out those areas and it looks like I didn't get a snap there. Holding shift to kind of smooth out these areas and so on. So I don't really need the quad draw mesh anymore. I'll remove that. I'm going to turn make live off and now my object just becomes standard selectable mesh again but uh, the textures or shaders are not displaying because I disabled those through the layer so I'll just right click on the layer and I'll go into the uh, display mode and I'll set that to be shaded. So now we're going to talk about some other symmetrical modeling options that have been added and remember I smoothed this out so just for simplicity I'm just going to grab the smooth node and I'm going to set the divisions back down to zero just so I'm kind of back where I started. So let's say that I started to refine this using a variety of different ways so I'm just going to turn off my symmetry and we're going to go in and grab the ear here and I'll set my soft select uh, range to kind of just affect the area right there around the ear. And I'm going to grab the bottom of the ear and I'm going to pull that out. I might want to pull the, the head in here a little bit, but the main thing I'm doing basically is just trying to deform or kind of distort the ear just so I can demonstrate a point here. So let's just say I've got a giant ear character now all of a sudden that I need to work with. So clearly one side is different from the other. Now what happens if I need to copy that over to the other side. Well, instead of splitting the mesh in half, I now have the option of just selecting the vertices on one side of my object. And under Edit Mesh, I have two options. One is a symmetrize, which will basically allow you to define a center point as an axis, and it will copy the shape across that axis uh, based on the selected vertices. So now I have giant ears on both sides. Now the other option, if I undo that step, is to instead of copying the shape you can flip the shape so you can grab edges or verse either one and i can say flip and that's going to flip it over to the other side again i just choose my center line axis now it's going to copy the shape from the left to the right and the right to the left you'll notice that the textures did not flip because the topology did not change that was actually just a essentially a copy of the shape itself now in some cases you actually might want to mirror the mesh over completely in, in terms of the actual topology and not just the shape. So we have a new consolidated mirror tool, uh, which basically combines the legacy mirror tool and the legacy mirror cut tool into a single new tool that consolidates a lot of that functionality and then adds some new stuff as well. So a couple of things that I can do in here. One is if I turn off the cut mode, I can just set my geometry to type, type to be flip. And what that will do is the equivalent of essentially inverting the mesh, but it takes care of all the normals for you. It doesn't uh, you know, require you to go in and do any kind of weird flipping of the normals. It just flips the mesh kind of intelligently for you. Now, another thing that I can do is I can switch this into uh, copy or instance mode. I can turn on cut and I can mirror this over to the other side. And I just choose the axis uh, and direction that I want to mirror. And I simply apply and that's going to cut my object in half and essentially mirror it over. So now you'll notice the topology is mirrored because the textures are actually flipped. That means the UVs were flipped as well. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you can change the direction at any point. So I could flip top to bottom or I could flip left to right. Um, I could set plus or minus. There we go. So now I'm mirroring in the positive direction. Now I'm mirroring in the negative direction. And if I switch this to Z, then it's gonna mirror front to back and so on. So you have a lot of control over things like the direction and the and the uh, axis that you're mirroring across. You can also choose a custom plane and then I can grab that position and I can interactively start to pull that in and out and that'll automatically stitch 
those center line points. We've also really improved the way that it stitches that center line. So it's much more predictable and much more robust. Uh, it doesn't create a lot of extra vertices. It doesn't create, leave any gaps. It's just very clean. Now, the last thing to point out is I mentioned the UVs. If I take a look in the UV editor, you can see that historically, and by default here, my UVs are basically just gonna be overlapped as soon as I did that cut. Oftentimes, though, that's not what you want. You actually want the mirrors, the, rather the UVs that you've already created to be mirrored. So I've got a flip UVs option where I can actually just go in and say, I wanna flip that across the world in one direction or the other, or I wanna flip that across the local axis, and then it will flip it locally. Uh, so that I'll get the appropriate mirror in this case. And now you can see I've mirrored the topology. Um, so now the, the UVs, in other words, are, are kind of recalibrated. Now, of course, this is not at all like the Witcher character is supposed to look. So all I have to do is just grab my mesh again, and I can just change that direction back. And then I get my nice, uh, nice normal looking ears back. Now you might notice here that I've got a seam down the center. That's just because I forgot to actually set my smoothing so i can come in here and set my smoothing angle and if i set my smoothing angle to a higher value that'll go in and take care of that center line seam so that i get nice clean smoothing across the center of the character now another thing to point out is the uvs if i take a look at the borders are not necessarily going to be perfect so i may have to go in here and do some stitching so i can do some use my handy little sew tool to basically grab that center line and just basically stitch that up right down the middle and I can do the same thing here, stitching that line right down the middle. Um, if I want to now start to work in a symmetrical fashion for UV editing, we've added functionality for that as well. So for example, if I were to go in and grab a UV and begin to manipulate that UV, and uh, rather those UVs, let's just turn off the image for now. Uh, but let's just go in and change the shape and start to modify this in different ways. Maybe grab the center here, something like that. Also using various tools. So for instance, uh, I've got tools for doing pushing and pulling and smoothing and whatnot. So I'm just gonna make some kind of dramatic changes here using all of my various tools. And of course, something like an unfold and whatnot. So I can go in and make all these changes. And now after that, I wanna go over and copy that over to the other side. So we've added a new symmetrized UVs tool as well. And same idea, you just select the middle point, the axis, and then I can use my control uh, to actually go in and change the center in terms of the reference point. And now when I sculpt or rather paint, it's actually going to symmetrically kind of align those UVs across that axis. So I'm painting on one side and I'm shifting over to the other, or I can do the opposite where I can paint on one side and shift it over to the opposite side. And again, ensure that my shells are symmetrical. So the last thing to point out is that all of this can be applied to character modeling, but it can also be applied to things like hard surface modeling. So here I'm gonna take this sword uh, behind my character and you can see that it's a hard surface type object, but also it's kind of off at an angle So if I were to go into my mirror mode, I can actually set this to object Symmetry and now when I hover over my object, even though it's off kilter to the world, I can still make uh, symmetrical edits. So that includes things like grabbing faces and doing stuff like extrudes in order to do these kind of architectural type extrudes, adding things like offsets and then maybe repeating that and adding something like a, a scale or, or rather a push, uh, as well as things like multi-cut where I can go in and I can add things like edge loops at various points following these paths. But then in addition to that, I can use things like knife cuts where I click outside of my object and simply drag across my object in order to create these kind of more architectural type slices with the knife tool. So all in all, Maya has come a long way in the last two or three releases in terms of symmetrical modeling. And this is really the release where we kind of finish off all the loose ends and make Maya a truly symmetrical modeling tool. Thank you for your time.